Halima Aden made catwalk history when she became the world's first hijab-wearing supermodel, featuring in campaigns for some of the biggest names in the fashion industry. I've never got to experience flipping through a magazine and seeing somebody in a hijab, somebody that I could relate to. So to be that person for other girls was just a, a dream come true. But over time, Halima felt the industry was clashing with her Muslim faith. And in November 2020, she announced on Instagram that she was quitting. I felt great pressure being the first Muslim hijab wearing model. I got to a place where I was so far removed from my own image. And I ran into problems like jeans being placed on my head in place of a regular scarf. I've arranged for Halima to meet with an industry leader, fashion designer Tommy Hilfiger, to talk for the first time face to face about the need for change. I understand why you left the fashion industry. There's been a lot of abuse and a lot of disrespect. And Halima exclusively tells us that by quitting, she hopes to stop other diverse talent from leaving the industry. Don't change yourself, change the game. If anything, I want the girls to know Halima took one for the team. You know, I sacrificed my career so that they could feel comfortable to speak up in any setting. Halima Aden was born in a Kenyan refugee camp after her family fled civil war in Somalia. They moved to the US state of Minnesota when she was seven years old. At home, the focus was on getting good grades and going to college. Halima Aden, but after competing in Miss Minnesota USA in 2016, the first hijab and modest swimsuit wearing contestant to do so, she was spotted by modeling agency IMG. It was written in her modeling contract that she would never remove her hijab and that she would have a blacked out box to change in on shoots to protect her modesty. By 2019, she was walking the runway with fashion superstars and making history yet again, collaborating with designers like Tommy Hilfiger to become the first model to wear a bikini in Sports Illustrated magazine. Hi, Sadova. Hi, Halima. Since quitting, she hasn't publicly spoken about her experiences with industry insiders. But now I've arranged for her to meet back up with Tommy Hilfiger to talk about her decision. You're meeting Tommy today and um, you have some questions for him. Given everything that we've been through this year, the you know BLM movement, um, it's just such a tom timely conversation. And it's my first since my exit of the fashion industry. It's going to be an iconic, you know, sit down. I've been speaking with models from diverse backgrounds here in London to find out what it's like working in the fashion industry. And they have some questions for Tommy and Halima. Ramla is 22 years old and is a Muslim hijab-wearing model. I wanted to ask you a question about how you said that your religion and the fashion industry aren't compatible. And I just want to know what you think we can do to make industries compatible and if you think it's possible. I think they should be compatible. You know, the first two years, I would come to every shoot with my hijabs, I would do it myself, and I had complete control. And then the last two years, I kind of trusted the team on set to do my hijab, and that's when I ran into problems, like jeans being placed on my head in place of a regular scarf. Um, just the way that they styled it, I got to a place where I was so far removed from my own image, and my hijab kept shrinking. It's upsetting to me to hear that some stylists or some people would try to alter your way mm -hmm. uh, f from who you are even. And I really believe that that's a flaw in the fashion industry. You know, I've been in situations, I won't say any names, but for a different designer, and he actually put my dressing space where I had to walk in the men's dressing space to get to my dressing space. And so it was like, wait, did you guys think this through? And it put me in a very uncomfortable position to then walk through the men changing to get to my dressing space. So disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I just hope and pray that that chapter is behind us in history. And I really, rem I remember we made you a, a special Scarf, swimwear outfit. 
the burkini. That's right. I mean, it was just such an incredible experience, especially when you look at the history of the burkini. We have countries like France banning it in public pools and on beaches. And so I think we made quite the statement to be featured in Sports Illustrated Swimsuit. We pushed the needle. Well, I think you have to be very proud of the fact that you stuck to your beliefs. Sometimes, you know, I felt like it was a very thin line I had to walk and I would be upsetting sometimes people from the Muslim community. I had so many comments like, this burkini is way too form-fitting, but also young girls were constantly messaging me, we want to see you in unique looks, we want to see your scarf done differently, you know, so it was a very, yeah, it was a very thin line to walk. Ramla has been modeling for two years and wanted to share some of her industry experiences with Halima and Tommy. I've been asked by a stylist if I could wear a cuff out dress and we had a whole argument about it because I told them that I wasn't willing to wear something so revealing. And another time I was asked by a photographer if I was willing to get changed in the middle of the park and I was so shocked. I think it's heartbreaking. It's sad that the stylist didn't recognize that they have a hijab wearing model so she's not going to be comfortable wearing a cut up dress. What did you think about that? I think it's outrageous and I think it's disrespectful. That, that really angers me. It's embarrassing to be a part of a, a, a business and part of a community that has such outrageously antiquated mm -hmm. ideas and I think that it has to change. I hope I can be a leader of that change. And I really believe that it comes from the top down. The owners of these companies, the head of these companies, all they have to do is call the shots. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is make the rule book. There's so much that goes on mm -hmm. behind the scenes that has to be corrected. There needs to be diversity with the makeup crew, the hair stylists, and so it's not just about having a diverse catwalk. I was on a shoot once and there was another Muslim hijab wearing girl and so they gave me my box and they told her to go find a bathroom to change in. And so when I saw that we weren't being treated equally, like that never sat well with me. I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm disappointed you left the industry, for, for selfish reasons, I, I understand it completely. Do you think it was a wake-up call for the industry? I do. I think it was a wake-up call for the industry because I think other brands and other designers were saying, what did we do wrong? And I'm surprised more models have not been vocal about it because there's been a lot of abuse and a lot of, I would say, disrespect in the fashion industry with, uh, between photographers and models. I really hope if I did anything the last four years is to give models the opportunity to know that they can speak up. But you're going to go down in history as the one who made the difference. You know, I've said it once and I'll say it again here, don't change yourself, change the game. You know, I felt great pressure being the first Muslim hijab wearing model in the industry and if anything, I want the girls to know Halima took one for the team. You know, I sacrificed my career so that they could feel comfortable to speak up in any setting. So Tommy, what are you doing to champion diversity within the fashion industry? Well, we created the People's Place program to unlock doors for talented people of color who wouldn't ordinarily get the opportunity to really work for a big company or have mentorship. Why is it so personal to you? You know, from the very beginning, I wanted my brand to be for everyone and everybody. And when I launched the Tommy Hilfiger brand, I started dressing the hip hop kids and the rappers. Aaliyah. A Aaliyah. Beyonce when she was 16, before people knew who she was. Mm -hmm. Salt and Pepper, TLC, Puff Daddy, Snoop Dogg. A lot of people came to me and said, do, do you want to dress those people? I said, oh my God, it's a compliment. It's, it, it made my brand cool and it made my brand relevant. Fashion brands around the world have pledged to improve diversity at all levels of their company. But a 2019 study of the beauty and fashion industry in the US 
found that almost three quarters of board of director positions were held by white men. Kayleen has a question for Tommy on what he is doing to ensure representation across the board. My question to Tommy Hilfiger is if you're educating your staff and casting directors as to what diversity really is. Uh, I've had, I would say, knock down, drag out fights with casting directors who have worked for us, uh, stylists who have worked for us, who have told me that this girl doesn't belong on our runway for certain reasons. And I have said, look, my name is on the door. You work for me. We're doing what I want to do. Good for you. So with my teams, I make sure that we are equally as diverse and inclusive behind the scenes as we are in front of the lines. But I want to know what's next for you. <laughs> what are you going to do next? You know, I'm looking at other industries and other fields that don't have a strong Muslim women presence. And how could I break the mold again, just like I did with fashion, like how can I be the first, you know, in the film industry, writing a children's book about the refugee crisis. So uh, the future is looking really bright and I'm excited for what's to come. What do you want your legacy to be? I want to be known as someone who walked the walk, didn't just talk the talk. My hope is that the entire industry changes and I know that I cannot affect that change alone, and it's just not for the ad campaign, or it's just not for the runway. It has to run like a river through the entire company. I hope we can have more conversations like this, where you know, you're inviting models to have a seat at the table, um, where it could be more collaborative, and above all, I want it to be inclusive. I want us to care about one another, and for it to be genuine on and off the runway. And so the future of fashion, it's looking very promising.